Once again, Blue Jackets uh, offense showed up and the goaltending didn't. And I don't know why we can't get both things to show up at the same time. We're going to talk about that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get things started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube. I also have to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase now saturday's game was uh not the best game we've seen i don't think it was the worst uh, i think both teams were kind of uh, this is a game that i think both coaches are not going to be super pleased with obviously nashville pleased to get the win i think blue jackets annoyed to not get two points but it's better than getting zero points um but it was not a particularly great game um i think it was Messi, a lot of turnovers, a lot of uh, what I would consider to be not great goals. Um, like, I'm trying to think, the potentially the Marchenko goal was the only goal that was actually like, oh, that's a good goal, actually. Like, uh, I thought all four goals on Tarasov were not great, um, frankly. Uh, and you know that I love to defend the goalies on this podcast, but it was not a good performance from him. Um same, Scott Wedgwood, I thought, made a, a handful of extremely, extremely very good saves. But the th- the three goals that he allowed, I think the Marchenko one was legit. The Aston Reese one, defense should have had it. And the Wierenski one, um, I think he was probably screened, but I still think, like, I don't know. All three Blue Jackets goals were kind of weird. All four of Nashville's goals, I think, were... Tarasov should have had all of them, quite frankly. Um, And it's frustrating uh, because the Blue Jackets were leading 2-0 and then they were leading 3-2 and then they lost 4-3 in overtime. Uh, Horrific blowout by uh, David Stevenson, who was not very good last night, which he's been fine um, most of the season. I've seen a lot of people calling uh, for his head, being like, well, he's been horrible all season. Um, He hasn't. He's been fine. Um, A a frustrating game for him, I think, especially on that overtime, like blowing a tire, um, falling over, letting uh, Jonathan Marcheseau just kind of do what he wants. I still think that um, Tarasov should have had that goal, but it's tough when your defenseman is lying on the floor near the ice, near the wall. Um, and you've got, I think Yago Chidikov was the guy that was like playing defense on that. Um, just a, just a rough way to, uh, a rough way to lose that game. Um, Severson has been like, I'm just looking up his, his stats now. He's been fine. Um, not like, again, not lights out good, but he's been, he's been fine, you know? Um, giving the puck away a lot, but so is everyone on this team sometimes. Um, also, this was a, this is a, an interesting point that um, someone brought up. I don't remember. I think it was Jay Fresh, maybe. Um, takeaways this season have basically, uh, sorry, giveaway. Yeah, takeaways this season. No, giveaways. I'm, it's very early here. It's not very early here. I'm just tired. Um, giveaways this season apparently have like doubled when you look at the data that the NHL is providing to, you know, people who track these kind of analytics, people who scrape the data from, you know, these these um, data, the the collections that the, that the NHL put out. Um, apparently, um, giveaways have, have doubled. Uh, and JFresh suspects that that's because they've changed the way that they track the data or they're tracking something different, or if they are using the data, the tracking data in the puck to uh, basically find out when it gets yeeted away 
from a player. Um, and he suspects that they might be using like dump ins that no one really challenges as a giveaway technically. So everyone in the league is, is doing a lot of giveaways. So like it's not a super helpful stat to look at necessarily. Um, takeaways I think is more useful, but uh, giveaways is is not a super useful stat to look at in my opinion. Um, this is this is a this, this, so we'll go back to the the Damon Severson of it all. Um, this is kind of a Damon Severson play that you just have to live with. Sometimes I feel like um, he wasn't great all game, but that play specifically is. Um, I talked about this last season. Um, I talked about this with um, some people that that know that knew him from his time with New Jersey. Is that he is a perfectly fine and cromulent defenseman. Um, and occasionally his brain will just blue screen and something dumb will happen. And th- 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 that was the dumb thing that happened. It was, um, he managed to blow a tire and couldn't get back in time and the Preds won the game. Um, and I'm not putting all of this on Severson. I don't want it to sound like I am putting it all on Severson, but that did feel like a man, just the worst time for your brain to to stop working. And listen, we've all been there. You know, I do, I do this all the time. My brain will just like stop working. Um, I like to describe it like uh, in The Sims, when you delete a command, then they just kind of stop and stop what they're doing. And it feels like Damon Severson was a sim that someone deleted the command of take the puck back. And so he was like, well, guess I'll not. Um, but just uh, honestly, the Blue Packets should have had two points in this game. I think arguably the Preds should also have had two points in this game. I mean, no one deserved any points because it was just a very messy very messy game. Um, again, neither team I did I thought played particularly well. Um, the shot totals were basically even. It was thirty three for Nashville, um, four goals on on thirty three shots, and then three goals on twenty eight shots for the Blue Jackets. So again, like neither goalie did a great job. Um, Nashville won the face-off battle. Uh, neither team scored on the power play, which I want to talk about special teams in uh, in a minute, actually. Um, the Preds hit anything that stood still long enough. They had 39 hits, um, which basically means they didn't have the puck, frankly. Uh, like, I see a lot of people talking about how, well, this team is soft. They don't hit enough. And I'm like, well, if you have the puck, you're not hitting anyone. Um, and, uh, you know, I think sometimes that's, kind of too simplified because sometimes a team just doesn't hit because they don't hit. But like, if you're hitting, a, if you're, if you're not hitting, then there's, there's explanation for that. If you are hitting people a lot, that means that you don't have the puck a lot because you don't hit if you have the puck. So Nashville didn't have the puck a turn despite getting more shots on goal. So like I said, weird, weird, messy game. Um, a lot of giveaways for both teams. Like we've, we've just discussed that giveaways are up. Um, league wide for reasons that no one has quite yet figured out because of theories. Um, just a not a fun game to watch, frankly. Um, I I didn't watch it live. I I watched the uh, I watched the replay um, yesterday evening. Not a fun game to watch. Like I've I've watched. You know there were games that I have been frustrated by. Uh, there are games where like the um, the first game against the Wild, the season opener, that was a fun game. That was a good game, despite the fact that the Blue Jackets lost, you know? Um, even if the Blue Jackets had won this game, I don't think I would be sitting here being like, yeah, it was a really fun game. I had a great time. Um, just not good hockey from basically anyone. Um, except there's one guy that I want to talk about that is playing good hockey and can, continues to play good hockey. Um, so we're going to talk about him in just a second here on Lockdown Blue Jackets. First, I've got to tell you about Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Well, it is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to everyone. All you do is pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash, so you can run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You want to play Prize Picks alongside Drewski, Joe Budden, and MMA champ Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promo tab of the app to view entries from the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. So you can see uh, if your opinions match up with uh, celebrities, basically, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and 
Pricebook puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So, sign up today, get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that bonus. It's guaranteed, which is great. And they offer weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Do you think Justin Jefferson will get more than 83 and a half yards next week? Do you think Christian McCaffrey will run for more than 75 and a half yards? You can cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on Price Picks. Just use the code Locked On NHL when you download the app today to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. That's L O C K E D O N N H L for fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Price picks run your game. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Uh, I want to talk about Kromachenko, who is leading the team in scoring right now. Uh, he's got four goals in seven games, um, which is on pace for uh, probably a billion, I think. Uh, But he has been one of a couple of players that has just been, again, dominant for this team, especially, you know, four goals in seven games in the grand scheme of things is like not, oh my God, super impressive. I just looked up who's leading the team. Like Mark Stone has 17 points already this season, um, which is, wild now vegas has uh vegas has played uh nine games so far so he's averaging just over just under two points a game um which is again impressive but i want to talk about machenko specifically um because it feels like Apart from, okay, I just looked up what he's projected to have. Um, he's on pace for a almost 50 goal season, which is not going to happen, but would be so funny. Um, he's got nine points in seven games right now to lead the Blue Jackets, and uh, leading them, he is. It's uh, he's just been very fun to watch. Um, and he is again thriving on that top line. Um, your top four scorers right now is Marchenko, Monahan, Wierenski, and Chinikov. Uh, Marchenko with nine points, Monaghan, Brensky, and Chinikov are all a point a game. At, uh, they've all got identical three goal, four assist stat lines. Um, but Marchenko is, he's just, he feels poised to be a special player in this league. And that's not to say that the other four guys aren't special players. I think Monaghan is coming in and having a really great start to the season, which I love to see. Um, Wierenski, I think, can be, you know, a, a top 10, top 20 defenseman in this league if he plays the right way and stays healthy for long enough, knock on wood. Um, Chinikov, again, I think is poised to have a breakout season, but I don't think it's in the same way as Machenko, who, since he has come into this league, like his shot has been the thing, you know, and we laugh about his rookie season. He had, what, 21 goals and and four assists or something like that, which was, again, truly so funny. Um and then last year he picked up the assists. This year he's he's you know about even. He's got four goals, five assists. Like if he can get as many assists as he has goals, like my prediction is, I want I want to see thirty and thirty from from Marchenko this season. Um, and I I think he does it. I really do. Um, he has excelled. Which uh, he's mostly been with Monaghan uh, for basically the entire season. Um, I think they. Mixed the lines up a little bit last night um, after a, a scoreless first period. Um, I'm just looking up what that uh, what the lines looked like last night. I am uh, on Natural Stat Trek, uh, which is a very good site. I've used it before. I talk about it all the time. Um, I'm just pulling up the, the report for the Preds game to see uh, what happened with the forward lines. Um, it looks like for the bulk of it, they stayed, the line stayed as they were, which um, were mostly fine. Um, the Fantilli line, I think, is is figuring things out. There was a really, really great play between Fantilli and Chidakov that should have been scored. And again, that was one of Scott Wedgwood's, like, 10 bell saves. Um that line, figuring it out. Mikhail Pucher was this close to his first NHL goal as well. But that top line, I think, is is really doing the heavy lifting at the minute. Um, the 
the fourth line is is kind of feasting, uh, or this might be the third line. I don't know which order the lines go in right now because the Blue Jackets have like two and a half third lines. It's fine. Um, but the Van Reems like Kareli LeBanc line I thought was really great. But for me, Marchenko was such a dominant player, and he feels a little bit like um, Timo Meyer, who was really really great in in um in San Jose and has not been as good since he came to um since he came to New Jersey because Timo Meyer is a player that thrives on basically just volume shooting. He has the puck a lot, he shoots the puck a lot, and that's why he scores the scores a lot. Um he doesn't get to do that as much in New Jersey and I think it's led to some kind of down stats from him and it feels like Marchenko is kind of Kind of the same in terms of he just shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots. Um, and it's it's very similar to how Timo Meyer plays. And I think Marchenko is, is getting rewarded for that. Um, some defensive kinks to work out, shall we say. Um, I don't think that line matched up particularly well against... Uh, it was the Ryan O'Reilly line, I want to say. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but... Um, I don't think that they necessarily won that match up, but they created a lot of offense. They just also gave up a lot of, of offense as well, um, which, I mean, that was true of a lot of players on uh, on the team. Um, Wierenski continues to just, like, make everything happen. By the way, this is not a segment about Wierenski. This is the same about Kromachenko. But um, in 27-46 of ice time last night, he was on the ice with 35 shot attempts, 26 again. So, like, again giving up more than I would like, but um, considering he had 11, he was on the ice for 11 more shot attempts than second place, which is I'm pro of. Um, very funny. Um, Zach wrensky has been so fun to watch this season. I know I said that like no one was good last night or like very few players were good last night, but Wrensky's just, or oh, Saturday night, excuse me. Um, Wrensky's just really fun to watch. Um, and it feels like he really can be a dominant player in this league. Again, providing he can stay healthy for the whole season. Um, he did, he shades of it last year, and I feel like he looked better like this year than he did last year. Um, I want to talk about special teams as well, uh, because one of them is good and one of them is not so good, and I bet you can't guess which one is not so good. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, lock on Blue Jackets. I want to talk about FanDuel. Uh, because you can get ready to tackle NFL action right now with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And if you're a new customer, you can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL and other sports all in one place. And uh, all you have to do, go in. If you've never used FanDuel before, it's super easy to use. Just find the heaviest favorite you possibly can. Put five bucks on it, and if you win, you're going to get 150 in bonus bets. Like, put put five bucks on the Chiefs winning the game, for example. Like, literally, I can't I can't tell you how easy it is to win money on betting if the Chiefs win or not. Um, and you don't have to have a million pages open. Like, I know that when I'm doing uh, like fantasy sports, for example, I have 17 different ESPN tabs open. You don't have to do that with FanDuel. If you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the stats, you can do live play-by-play, and so much more on that same play, same page where you place your bets. So you can go, you can see how your bet is doing. Um, you can see if there's any other bets that you might want to place now that the, the odds have changed. Who can say? But go to FanDuel.com, bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets. Join today. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Uh, I want to talk very briefly about the special teams because the power play isn't, quite frankly. Um, it's not like Buffalo Sabres bad, which, yikes, I just looked at their numbers. Um, they're sitting on a 15% success rate for the, uh, the power play right now, um, which is not great. Uh, it is better than the uh, Edmonton Oilers, who the Blue Jackets face tonight, which uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about if we have time. Um, and frankly, the Oilers have a much better, much more um, firepower on their power play. So, like, I'm not like surprised 
that the Blue Jackets are struggling on the uh, on the power play necessarily, just because I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the uh, personnel that they have, um, and quite frankly, they have one power play unit and then a power play unit of guys, you know. So I am I am unsurprised that the uh, the power play is not clipping along at a pace that we thought it might, based on what the team was going to look like, you know, in August. But it is still frustrating. I still think that top of the unit should be should be converting. Um, it just is not. Um, and there was only not a lot of penalties last night. Uh, I believe there was more like offsetting penalties than there were. I keep saying last night I, because I watched the game last night. And so in my head, that's when the game happened. Um, but for the most part, not a lot happened. Um, the Preds had 137 of power play and had four shot attempts at four and one against. The Blue Jackets had 253 of uh of power play time and had three shot attempts for a none against so again extremely low event um the expected goals for um in two in you know almost three minutes of, of power play time was 0.21 so they would have had to play five times as much power play time as they did to score a goal essentially if if that's if that, that's not how expected goals for works, but it is for the purposes of this, it basically is. Um, whereas the the Preds managed to create just under half a goal, so they would only have had to go like just over twice as long uh, to it, theoretically um, get a goal on the power play. So, like, is that credit to the penalty killers on both sides? Yes, uh, and the Blue Jackets do have a reasonably good um, penalty kill this season. Uh, they're sitting, I think, tenth in the league. Uh, they are sitting 13th in the league right now at 80%. Um, the Predators, however, have the second best penalty kill in, in the league right now. So again, I'm not surprised that the power play didn't go, but I wish it would go more, um, quite frankly, because it's it's starting to get frustrating. Uh, I don't know the last time the Blue Jackets scored a power play goal, and I really should know that, but I simply don't. Um, feels like it's been forever. Um, it just, it just feels like it's been forever. Uh, but unsurprised they didn't score against the Preds on the power play. The Preds have a very good penalty kill. Um, would love to see them get on the board on the power play, uh, in tonight's game against the Oilers because the Oilers have the worst penalty kill in the league. They're sitting at 60%, um, in, in terms of penalty kill success. Um, they have, I believe a worse record. Than the Blue Jackets. Uh, the Blue Jackets are okay. Technically, set the same record. The Blue Jackets are three, three and one. Um, the Oilers are four, four and one. So they've got one more win and one more loss. So it's basically the same. It's NHL five hundred, you know. Um, but that is not where I expected the Oilers to be. Um, Connor McDavid is looking extremely uh, human, mortal right now. Um, I mean, he's, he's got 10 points in, in nine games, but that's not the kind of numbers that I expect from McDavid. I do think he's maybe starting to wake up a little bit, which is not great for us. Uh, Leo Dreisaitl also has 10 points in, in nine games, so he's another guy to watch. Uh, but both of those guys, they only have two power play points. of Like, eight of their points each have come on even strength, which um, I feel like there was a large conversation last year about how much of a power play merchant McDavid was and how all of his points came on the power play. Now he's scoring them at even strength, which is dangerous for everyone, um, including the Blue Jackets, who play them tonight. So um, would love for the power play to figure itself out. It would love for it to do it tonight against the, the Oilers, where apparently they just don't like to kill penalties or try to kill penalties. Having said that, they will now run a complete, like, gambit and just absolutely slaughter the blue jackets on all areas of the ice but we live in hope you know if there was ever a time for the power play to sort something out it would be right now against the oilers um who are in kind of the same boat as the blue jackets with very poor goaltending um stuart skinner is two three and one and he's got an 890 save percentage calvin pickett is two and one um has an 875 save percentage daniel tarasov who had two back-to-back -back really good games 
was not great against the Preds. Uh, he's 3-1-1 one, one with an 8-8-6. Eight, eight, uh, Elvis, who I think we might see tonight, actually, uh, is 0-2. Oh, he's got an 8-54 save percentage. So, um, brace yourselves, I guess, um, for chaos, for many goals. Um, it's going to be like a 7-6 final. It's either going to be a one nothing final or a 7-6 final, and there's really no way to tell which way um, which way it's going to go. Um, depends on which goalie the Oilers bring. Again, neither of them have been great. Uh, Skinner has been slightly better, um, but again, neither of the Blue Jackets goalies have been great. They Actually, these teams have kind of identical... Um, Say, take team save percentages, basically. The Oilers have a team save percentage of 877. The Blue Jackets have a team save percentage of 878. So just 1.001 better, and I'll take it. Um, but Oilers are beating the Blue Jackets in the face-off. They are fifth, they're third in the league with face-offs. Uh, they are scoring basically no goals a game, which, again, is wild considering the, the personnel that they have. Uh, they are 30th in the league in goals for... 17th against versus the Blue Jackets, who are now fifth in the league in goals for per game, which is a very still a very bizarre place to be in. Um, and then they are 21st in the league in goals against per game. Um, I do think this is going to be a messy game. The I would be surprised if the Oilers figure out tonight how go, how scoring goals works um, because it's been a minute since the Blue Jackets have had a highlight reel. Carter McDavid goal scored against them, so like I feel like we're overdue, you know. Um, and the, the Oilers are on a, a two game winning streak right now. They just beat Detroit, um, last night in overtime. And it actually was last night. It wasn't a game that I watched on, uh, it was not a game that I watched on repeat. So, uh, we'll see what goes from there. Um, I'm just looking up which goalie they had, um, in net for that. Cause I think it was Skinner. Um, but I don't know off the top of my head. Um, oh, it was Calvin Pickard. Okay, so expect to see Skinner tonight. Um, Skinner is a, a goalie. Um, well, that's maybe mean. He is, he has been an extremely good goalie for stretches. Um, he has not started the season very well. Um, and like no one on the Oilers has really, you know, I talked about how, you know, McDavid has 10 points on the season and that's a down season for him, you know, uh, and beyond that, like, Dreisaitl has six goals, um, no one else on the team has any more than three, um, you know, only 10 players have scored a goal for the Oilers this season, which again, I know that they're, they are a top heavy team, but you got to you got to be better than that you know and a lot of those guys are like okay well we got two goals we got one goal and like again it's kind of a similar -ish story for the blue jackets where um my check has four goals and then four guys have uh four other guys have three goals um and then uh, 12 of uh, 12 blue jackets have scored goals so far this season um still looking for their first goals notably uh Provorov looking for his Mikhail Puchar looking for his um first uh, career NHL goal um, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised that Sean Corrali hasn't, but uh, he is not playing a lot of ice time. So um, we'll see again. We'll we'll continue to track that. But like he's playing m about the same amount of ice time as Van Riemsdyk and Aston Reese, who both have goals. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Corrali get one tonight. Uh, again, this feels maybe like a bottom six scoring night tonight um, because, again, the Oilers are kind of top heavy. Um, and that's not necessarily to say that their depth is bad, but I feel like when you're top guys, you know, when you have a guy like Connor McDavid, everyone else, you know, you've got to kind of grade on a curve a little bit, but when you have McDavid at the top of that, everyone else just kind of looks not as good in comparison, you know? Um, and they've got Dreisaitl as well, who is arguably a top five player in the league, arguably a top 10 player in the league. I'm not going to get into where exactly I rank him in terms of active plays in the league right now, but he's again, a very, very, very good player. And then everyone else on the team is kind of there. Um, you know, they've got Hyman, they've got Bouchard. Um, I, I, they are as frustrated with Darnell Nurse as uh, basically anyone is frustrated with their highly paid defenseman. Um, but, you know, they have some good players on this team, but I do think this could be a game where the bottom six outworks their bottom six and, um, 
let's get another Mathieu Olivier two goal game. Why not? Like he's already um on pace to destroy his career um high in in points, which I think his career high is like thirteen points or something. He's already on uh five or six. Um which is again, I think that's fun. Uh and I do think that he should have another two goal game because I think it will be funny. Um and I think it will make Oilers fans mad, which again is is always fun. Um he's currently on pace for a 35 goal season. Um which seems unlikely, but I do think again, like seven games in, it's impossible to predict what kind of projections. But I do like the Lily prospects. It's like, well, if he plays all these two games, here's how many points he'd have. Uh, and the answer is that he would have a 58 point season with 35 goals and his career high right now in the NHL is 15. So he's already two thirds of the way to his career high in points. So I do think getting another goal or two um, tonight against Edmonton would be just so funny. Um, his career high, I think is five goals. So if he scores two tonight, then he's already hit his career high in eight games into the season. So like, why not? Let's do it. Um in all seriousness, I do think this is going to be a, probably a pretty high scoring game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to say Mikhail Future came so close to his first NHL goal on on Saturday night. I think he gets one tonight. Uh, I think watching the way that Fantilli and, and Chinikov uh, are rolling uh, again, they, they, they haven't combined for points yet, but it feels like it's close, right? And so I think that line is is primed for a breakout. So let's let's predict that. Let's go with. <laughs> go with a a five to three win for the blue jackets um and let's go with a Mikhail future goal why not we'll have fun with it um he deserves it i think he's looked really good needs to shoot the puck more um but beyond that i've I've really really liked future's game in the uh, in the early goings of this season um that's kind of what i've got for today uh tomorrow we're going to talk about tonight's game um, hopefully it is a fun one to talk about, uh, much more fun than the Predators game, which sure did happen, you know, but we'll talk about t- tonight's game, uh, and we'll, we'll unpack all of that. We'll see what we are still frustrated by and what we are less frustrated by. Um, I've been Jay Foster. Thank you for listening. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets, uh, you can email us if you have comments, questions, criticisms. That's lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. We're free and available on all podcast platforms. We're over on YouTube. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers, which if I could hit 1,000 by the end of the year would be so great. So if you haven't hit subscribe yet, please do already. Thank you once again for listening, for making us your first listen of the day every single day. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.